Now, you've been doing this study for how many years? I've been doing uh, work on uh, women and smoking cessation since the early 90s. Okay. For a long time. And I, it is really very hard to quit. Yes. Very hard. Uh, and um, we've been uh, looking at different ways to help women quit. My specific interest has been in uh, hormones and uh, oh, okay. if this has an effect on women and their ability to quit. Okay. So I understand that vitamin D is very beneficial for women as well. Is there anything else that we can help with women that may be premenopausal with prior to osteoporosis or? Well, let's go to the vitamin D for a moment. Okay. Um, the vitamin D is really important. Um, and for our latitude and the amount of sun that we get here, especially in the winter, mm -hmm. uh, you won't get much vitamin D from the sun. Right. And so it's really uh, helpful to be taking a vitamin D supplement. Uh, food. Some food is fortified with vitamin D. You get a little bit there. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, there are supplements available in uh, both the multivitamin. You can take uh, also a, a independent uh, vitamin D tablet. And the recommended dose is around 800 international units for an older woman. Okay. Um, and um, it's really um, helpful because it helps your body absorb the calcium. Okay. And normally vitamin D is uh, made in the skin uh, with the sunlight, uh, you know, uh, reflecting on the skin. But with the use of um, suntan lotion that we use, we don't really get much vitamin D. So mm -hmm. it's really um, an important part of bone health to take also the vitamin D as well as the calcium. Sure. And then the other thing that's, that is really important, you asked other things that people could do, and that's exercise. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. the type of exercise that's really recommended is weight-bearing exercise, something such as um, running or walking or cross-country skiing. Mm -hmm. um, many people, you know, with biking and swimming, that's good exercise for your heart. But yes. For actually your bone health, uh, you want kind of a weight-bearing exercise. Mm -hmm. And then you also should be, women should be doing some strengthening type of exercises a couple mm. times a week. Okay. That also builds up uh, the bones. And I think that's really important, especially in, in uh, the older woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even carrying in the milk and your groceries. Yeah, yeah you know, absolutely. That in yeah. itself. And mm. there are very simple things that people can do, you know, with uh, um, cans at home, they can learn how to do some very simple arm and leg strengthening type of exercises. Yes. I encourage all my women to, to be active to um, get into some sort of an exercise program. Yes, and it's not that you have to break a huge sweat or anything like that, but you know, versus right. cardio, but just to get out there and to get the bones moving. Too. Right, Yeah. right. Yeah. It feels good it just in, in general. Yeah, and even the endorphins helps right. with that as well. Right. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now you had mentioned that you do a study. So what is it that people would expect if, um, you know, I recommended that a friend of my daughter's went in to talk with you and she was having some issues and had been smoking since she was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So she applied to be a part of your study. What would she expect? Well, um, we have several studies going. We have um, a, our main, one of our main studies is uh, looking at postmenopausal uh, post women and smoking cessation. Okay. And having them um, either do, be randomized to either an exercise group or be randomized to a relaxation group and they uh, receive a medication called Chantex, which is uh, commonly used now to help people quit smoking. They get counseling and they come in weekly and they have a social group as well as um, uh, they're either in the exercise program or they have a relaxation type of, of program. And they do this for uh, eight weeks, mm -hmm. and then they're followed afterward for up to 15 months. Okay. The other thing we, we offer is a um, bone density mm -hmm. at the very beginning of the study, and then we have, again, repeat this at the end of the study because we're looking again at the effects of quitting smoking on uh, bone density okay. and bone health. Mm -hmm. Then our other study is looking at depressive symptoms in 
uh, reproductive age women okay. um, and whether this has an effect in conjunction with their menstrual cycle on their uh, reaction to a nicotine response after a short-term abstinence. Oh. And that's a much more involved uh, protocol, um, and, um, but it, it's, and it's an experimental study as opposed to a treatment study. Oh. But we are um, interested in finding out if depressive symptoms and, and menstrual cycle together have a, a negative or positive effect uh, in terms of helping women quit. Okay. Well, now, my question to you is, you were talking about postmenopausal. Right. So I'm not sure a lot of people are familiar with that term as well. So if right. you want to throw out a little bit more education on that sure. as too. Sure. Um, postmenopause uh, is defined as one year after a woman's uh, periods have stopped, whether okay. they've stopped naturally or whether by, surg by surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the woman has not uh, had menopausal surgery, then um, that year of uh, irregular bleeding is called perimenopause. Mm -hmm. And that is the time when uh, things start really changing in terms of the bone health. Okay. Um, the estrogen is kind of waning, wow. and the bone loss probably in that year is around 8 to 10% mm -hmm. of the total skeleton. Yes. And then in postmenopause, the bone loss uh, continues, but at a much slower rate, like one to two percent. And <clears throat> so, what a woman can do to kind of help uh, suppress this is they can um, take their adequate calcium, mm -hmm. uh, their vitamin D, mm -hmm. and exercise. Yes. And for the most part, um, we don't start doing bone densities until women are age sixty-five. Um, we clearly do them earlier if the woman has risk factors, mm -hmm. one or more risk factors, to get a sense of where their bone skeleton is. Sure. And um, risk factors being if they're a smoker mm -hmm. or if they're real sedentary, um, if they're on certain medications that uh, tends to make them lose bone, such as steroids. Okay. Um, or if there's a family, strong family history of osteoporosis, a mother, sister <clears throat> has osteoporosis or has had a hip fracture, um, or if they've had chemo for cancer, okay. there are several uh, risk factors that bring up red flags and make you uh, have or order bone densities earlier. Yeah, I was lucky enough to have one early because my mother had both hips replaced. Oh, she did. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so do you take calcium and I, vitamin D and I do exercise? I do, yeah. and that's kind of why you know, with my show, Knowledge for Wellness, yeah. to be preventative, and yeah. this is a great way for women to know, you know, if they are in their forties or fifties, you know, they can start now, yeah, and to you know, give get a better quality of life because that's something that I don't want to see, right. is my future going and having to go through that. As well. Actually, even uh, starting younger is, is really uh, an important thing for our teenagers to think about. Okay. Um, they have bone growth spurts, you know, mm -hmm. in their teens. It's important to get adequate calcium at that time to build their skeleton as much as we can. Mm -hmm. You actually reach your peak bone mass at about age 30. Oh, wow. And um, then you maintain it fairly well uh, unless you have uh, some other insult such as chemotherapy or some other thing that uh, medication that you're taking chronically like steroids for mm -hmm. asthma. But generally you can maintain your bone health until you hit perimenopause when then you start losing some of that bone. So yeah. the more bone mass that you've built up at age 30, the better off you are uh, when you at perimenopause start losing some of that bone. Yeah. But and the girls are pretty lucky now because now they're able to play a little bit more sports than in our age group right. because we weren't able to play hockey or broom balls right. and um, you know do a lot of physical activity at right. the time. We got to play tennis right. <laughs> yeah. in certain areas that we did. Right. So right. And so it doesn't seem as if this generation is going to have to worry as much about osteoporosis, but like you said, it's great insight that they start young 
right. and learn to take a multivitamin.